Warning, this video is going to be filled with non-politically correct truths and very blunt truths. So if you like the comfortable life, you like what's popular and what's trendy and what everybody's saying, acting like an activist, but they're really not helping anybody, this video is not for you. If you want the truth that many people aren't saying, this video is for you. As always, if you would like, you can follow me on Instagram at Dream Rare. You can follow me on Twitter at Legendary Energy. You can check out my website at legendary.vision. After this entire video, I'm going to post my links below. One is if you would like to sign up to my email list. The second one is if you would like to donate. And now pinned to the top of my page is my Bitcoin link. If you have Bitcoins and would like to donate in that way, a few people have been asking me that. That link is now pinned to the top of my Facebook page. Give me about 10 seconds for people to come in. And I want to talk about a story that is sweeping the nation and is sweeping social media for the first time in a long time. This is a story that independent analysts and journalists have been writing about for months and nobody's really been talking about it. And finally, the mainstream media has picked up on it. Social media has picked up on it. It's a really, really big deal. And I want to talk about what's going on, why it happened, and the problem with how people are reporting it now. It's great that a light is being shown to it, but like with every issue that I talk about, you need to look at the root of the problem or else you're never going to solve the problem. If you just scream at the problem and act like so surprised and horrified when a problem like this happens, but you continue to make the same exact mistakes that enabled this problem, like the slave trade in Libya that exists today, it's not helping anybody. You're not an activist. You're not a social Instagram hero. You're not a Twitter hero. You're not a celebrity, you know, justice, um, you know, Superman, you're just a uh, you know, popular fool, for lack of a better term. So slavery exists in Libya today. There's many reports kind of glossing over it, giving you a little bit about what's happening. But uh, from the reports that I've seen, it is the country has been left in shambles once Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State and Barack Obama as the President of the United States, they decided that they wanted regime change in Libya. And I'm not saying that Libya was perfect. I'm not saying that Gaddafi was perfect, although there are many reports that he was giving his people gold-backed currency. He was trying to give out free health care and give everybody a house. So I think it's, regardless of the political debate there, I wouldn't even say it's political, but the geopolitical or you know socio, whatever, uh, regardless of your opinion on that, I think everyone, including the CNNs and the New York Times, they even admit that Libya is way worse off than it was before. I, I don't even know if that is debatable. So even if you think, oh, well, we could have done this and that, it's way worse because they just killed the leader of Libya and left a complete power vacuum for extremists to take over. And the slavery is being put in place from the many reports that I've read, which are hard to find because the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about it. It is extremist, uh, you know, extreme religion, extremists in that religion that are enslaving people uh, that are Africans. So the problem with the way everyone's talking about it, because of course the American Black Lives Matter and the black activists, and there's nothing wrong with being a black activist, that's great, I think you should stand up for causes, but everyone I see posting about it is missing one point. And the irony of it is rappers like T.I., rappers that support and respect, are like, wow, this is a tragedy, how could we let this happen? It's those same people that are tweeting, oh my God, I can't believe that this, ha how did this happen? It's those same people tweeting the, oh, the shock, the horror of this happening. They're the ones that think that any person that likes President Trump is racist. Anybody that doesn't like Hillary Clinton must be sexist. And anybody who doesn't like Barack Obama must be racist. It's these same people. It's these same groups of people that are incapable of having a rational conversation about anything. Everything's racist, everything's sexist. And I'll tell you, that's how slavery happens in Libya. You wanna talk about black activism, they get you by using a black president. Whoa, yay, we have a black president, hooray. I'm not gonna lie, I was like, yeah, this guy's cool, he's smart, he's funny, you know? He plays basketball, he's real, he's keeping it real. 
I thought so as well. But now that reality is set in for me, I'm like, wow, he was doing a lot of crazy stuff that nobody has any idea about. He overturned propaganda acts. So propaganda has been re-legalized in the United States for the first time in, you know, 40, 50 plus years. He's in seven different countries bombing, dropping 26,000 bombs on seven different countries that we, we went from like one and two to seven. He killed multiple leaders and you know, oh wow, Gaddafi's dead and now there's slavery in Libya and no one cares. These same people, oh my God, I'm a black activist and I have to stand up for, for Libya because these are my people and I care. Then why can't we have a conversation about President Trump without you calling me a racist? How come we can't have a conversation about Barack Obama without you assuming that everyone who doesn't like them, oh, it's white lash, it's, it's Latino lash and Asian lash and black people who don't agree with me lash that... Oh my God, so many people don't like Obama and they must be racist. No, this is how it happens. And this is how they get you with something called identity politics. If you want to be a black activist or a racial activist or a white activist or a, who cares what race or ethnicity or religion you are, you're the ones that care. You're the ones who always talk about it. If that was not the case, no one would even bring it up because no, one's, no one cares. We're trying to have a conversation that has nothing to do with it. But... If you want to talk about activism, let's talk about identity politics. The Democratic Party especially, and a lot of you know Republicans are guilty of it as well, they use something called identity politics. It's using race, religion, and gender to bait in any race, mainly uh, blacks and Latinos, and I'm sure Asians and Muslims as well, and white people, you know, whatever. Uh, Gender. Oh my God, there's 80 different genders. Okay, that's fine. You could have as many genders as you want, but now all of a sudden, oh, the women have to go here. Hillary's got your woman card and come get your woman card with Hillary. And everyone's like, oh, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Yay. It's, it's somebody with the same skin color as mine. Yay. It's a woman with the same gender as mine. That's what racism is, is only liking somebody or disliking somebody because of their race. That is racism. That is sexism. And that is the, the definition of being you know, easily misled is agreeing with somebody just because they have the same gender as yours. So the irony of all of this, and I'm saying this, I'm having this conversation because everyone on the internet can talk about, oh my God, there's slavery in Libya. Okay, well, what are you doing about it? Because I'm trying to get at the root of the problem. And these are things that people have been trying to talk about for years, but you can't talk about Hillary without, or, or say, hey, I don't like Hillary Clinton. Oh, well, that, does that, I posted a, a Thanksgiving meme. I said, hey, they, well, I'm so thankful that we didn't have Hillary Clinton for president. They're like, are you a Trump supporter? You must support Trump. What, what are you trying to say? What's the conversation you're trying to have? You can't talk about these things without people calling you racist and sexist. And that's exactly how slave, if you're, whoa, how does slavery exist in 2017? Well, if you're a true activist, you would know it's because they use identity politics politics and political correctness to lie to everybody to the point where slavery comes into play and nobody knows or cares until now and nobody even saw it all coming until now hillary clinton went and killed gaddafi bragged about it in in interviews we came we saw he died she's cracking up yes she's the secretary of state under the obama administration and nobody seemed to care. Nobody noticed. No, no activist said a word when Gaddafi went down. No activist said a word when uh, Libya was taken over by Islamic extremists. No activist said a word when Iraq and uh, you know uh, Syria had m most of their major cities taken over by radical terrorists and you know terror organizations such as ISIS, Al Qaeda, and Al Nusra. No one said a word. And meanwhile, Damascus and Aleppo and, you know, uh, Baghdad and all of these cities in the Middle East are just being completely taken over by terror organizations, which are, yes, absolutely killing and hurting people of the Muslim religion, people of different ethnicities. You want to talk about racism, go to the Middle East and see how not racist they are. You're going to find out they're so racist, especially in extremist areas. I'm not saying all people. That would be very ignorant, but they're so racist that they're putting people into slave trade in 2017, literal slave trade. So this is not coming from the United States, and it, it definitely was exacerbated by the United States, but not President Trump. He just got in there last year, and these same people try to twist everything using identity politics, and it's the most racist stuff, and that's how they're going to continue to get you. If they put Kamala Harris... 
and she runs for president and you say, oh wow, she's a black woman. Uh, anybody who doesn't like her is racist. She know, of course, she's a black intelligent woman. She knows exactly how to pander to women and to black people and to Latinos and to Asians. She knows how to pander to white people and white activists as well. So yeah, that's how they get you. If you wonder why slavery exists, it's because you, we become so racist in the name of not being racist that we'll support anybody with the same skin color or gender as us and not question a single thing that they do. And when someone does come along and questions them like, hey, I'm thinking about not voting for Hillary Clinton. What are you, what are you a Trump support? Would you like Trump a lot? It's like, well, I, I mean, there's two options and like, I'm just trying to have a conversation. Like, well, what do you think about, what are you a big, you must be really right. It's like, well, do you know what she did in Haiti? Have you heard what she did in Libya? Oh, you're a xenophobe then? You were grabbed by the pussy? It's like, what are, you t what are you even talking about? I'm just saying maybe if you want to stop racism, you wouldn't put someone in that is now responsible for slavery in Libya. And yes, that is a large portion of the reason that slavery exists in Libya. It's not a blame. It's not a political thing. That's what they did. She bragged about it. She killed the leader of a country. And now there's a massive power vacuum for literal slavery to exist. And I'm not here to say that everything he was doing is perfect and that I have all the answers. Like Kanye said to Sway, you don't have all the answers. I never claim to. I tell people to look within themselves, be better people. But it's just at what point do people be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to have a conversation with somebody and I'm going to stop calling everybody racist and sexist and saying Trump is trying to destroy people. I'm not saying he's perfect. I know he's ignorant. I called him out. I'm not saying he's always ignorant, but he makes mistakes. I call him out on them. I did today. Everyone yelled at me. Oh my God, Anomaly told the truth about a time President Trump made a mistake, called the press, whatever. I'm just saying this as a blunt, hard truth because I'm sick of the little weak, comfortable lie. I'm sick of the fake you know, racist people who claim to not be racist in the name of stopping racism, who can't even have a conversation like this because they're so caught in identity politics. And I see it happening. The number one uh, group that is screaming about the slave trade for Libya right now, as everyone should, to be honest, it was Trump supporters and maybe some uh, intelligent progressives and intelligent, you know, activists who pay attention to the Middle East, who've been talking about the slave trade in Libya for months and no one listens because that's what the news does to people too. That's why I even broadcast this stuff. When we talk about this stuff for months, things like, whoa, there's, there's rampant sexual abuse happening for children. We've been talking about this for years. When it comes to Libya, we've been talking about this for years. And the reason it's not been mainstream news until today is because no one listens. They've convinced you that anybody like right of, of Rachel Maddow, who is so far left, she's like out in Pluto with her conspiracy theories and Joy Reid, who gets 60,000 retweets on a fake retracted story that New York Times themselves retracted back in June, but she still has such a, a low level uh, support group that they're like, yeah, let's retweet this story that doesn't even exist. And like I said, Trump makes mistakes too. I, he tweeted a, a video that was misleading and fake. I'm not saying it doesn't go both ways, but the truth of the matter is, that's what's happening. And, and when we say, hey, children are getting abused. Hey, maybe you should look at this. No one believes us. So it's like, at this point, I can't say I'm very impressed with the fact that people can share a post on Twitter or Facebook that says, hey, slave, slavery exists. And no, oh, this is so bad. This is, this is Trump's America. And this totally happened. No, it was from Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. And the reason that they got away with this stuff and probably so much more is because no one questions anything. If you're a woman and you agree with everything that Hillary Clinton says because she's a woman, you're going to get played. Welcome to slave trade in 2017 thanks to your ignorance and your sexism. If you like everything Barack Obama said because he has the same skin color as you or he doesn't have the same skin color as you, but you think he's cooler or better than other people because of his skin color, Welcome to pseudo-racism in the name of stopping racism. Welcome to slave trade in 2017 based on your ignorance. And if you refuse to even have a conversation with someone who disagrees with you and assume that they're racist because they don't like a black president and they're racist because they like a white president, that's how you get these type of things without having these conversations. I'm willing to hear every single Trump uh, critique about President Trump. 
I didn't even vote for him, so you're not going to really hurt my feelings. I mean, I think he's doing a way better job than people realize. I think even when he does make a lot of mistakes, the effect he's had in 10 months, in my opinion, has a more positive impact on society than the last 20 years of just fake illusions and lying. So I think his presence alone is doing a service to a lot of people. And even his biggest critics, it's like making them like wake up like, oh my God, something's wrong. It's like, you think so? We've been saying this for 15 years, but CNN tweets at one time and, oh yeah, we, we, we realize there's something wrong. We thought it was just a perfect society, you know, before, before a few months ago. So overall, I think his presence is great, but there's tens of millions of people who think that if you don't like Obama, you're racist. And e these people even include the Noam Chomskys and the, the Cornell West who are supposed to be the intelligent leaders of the activists and of the left-leaning progressives. Where are the good leaders? Where are the good speakers? Everybody's lying. Everybody's making up their own perspective. And I'm tired of it because between the last two days of the ridiculous two million videos on uh, YouTube of child abuse and all this crazy, creepy stuff and slave trade in Libya. I mean, what's a bigger one too? The fact that the news has been lying about a Russian conspiracy for a whole year and a half today. James O'Keefe posted a video of undercover with the Washington Post, like the head of all of that stuff, national security. And he's like, oh yeah, we're pretty much making this stuff up. He's like, we, I mean, we'll probably never find anything on Trump. They're doing it for ratings. They're using your emotions. They're using your hate for Trump to make money off you. It's what they're doing. Everybody uses President Trump because he's crushing it in the ratings. So my whole strategy, besides the fact of just being tired of how everyone else can't tell the truth, I talk about it, but then I try to inspire people and uplift people and tell people, hey, listen to both sides. Hey, come together. Hey, do this. Hey, do that. The rest of them, they're just profiting tens of millions of dollars off you and cracking up about it and, and just complete lying to you. So this, and, and meanwhile, all that's going on. YouTube has 625,000 videos with child predators swimming in the comments in the YouTube kids section, and no one said a thing for two years. That's how you get it with the lies in the media and you get slave trade in Libya by pseudo racism in the name of stopping racism. I'm tired of it. That's why I'm saying this and I'm doing it to help people. I'm not doing it to, oh my God, he's so mean or he does this. It's because everybody's lying to you. And now 95% of the people who are going to talk about the slave trade in Libya are going to twist it to be like, oh my God, this is Trump's America. Oh my God, how could this happen? And most of them are the major culprits of why it happened in the first place. Everybody I've seen so far that's freaking out about it, people I follow on Twitter, rappers and celebrities, they're the main reasons that stuff like this exists and nobody did anything about it. They're the same ones saying, if you like Trump, you're racist. How about I like Trump because he said he wouldn't have done that in Libya? How about I like Trump because he put his money where his mouth is and the same thing that happened in Libya he stopped in Syria. It doesn't exist anymore. And he potentially saved slavery in, in, in Syria. Talking about slavery in Libya now. Oh my God, everybody who likes Trump is racist. And oh, we're really concerned now because we care about all the black lives in the world. No, you don't. Because we've been talking about this for years and you can't have a conversation about it. And President Trump stopped this same thing, the regime change war of killing a leader and leaving a power vacuum for ISIS and Al-Qaeda. He stopped it in Syria. It was happening. The same thing that happened in Libya was happening in Syria. Just last year, terror organizations had control of the major cities. Russia came in to help Syria. The United States was funding moderate rebels and 99% of the reports and even Tulsi Gabbard, a Democrat from Hawaii, went to Syria, came back and told CNN and Jake Tapper to their face, U.S. taxpayer dollars are going towards funding terrorists. And he's like, oh, do you think so? And she was like, I know so because I was just there and I talked to everybody in Syria and they all said, can you please stop the U.S.? from funding terrorists. And J Jake Tapper's like, well, that goes against everything we've said all three years, so let's kick you off our platform and delete it off YouTube before people hear about it. So yeah, there's a bunch of reasons to like President Trump outside of being racist, sexist, xenophobic, or whatever other you know title you made up to not be able to have a conversation. And here's a main one. You wanna talk about the slave trade in Libya, there probably would have been something similar in Syria. 
But President Trump came in and the news paints, oh my God, everything's Russian is so terrible. Well, Russia, whether I know their intentions or not, I'm not saying they're perfect or great, far from it, but they were like, okay, we're gonna help Syria. We're not, we're not gonna let a regime change war. One of the reasons could have been, yeah, maybe they want power in that thing, but another reason is, believe it or not, all the mistakes that the United States makes in the Middle East that Americans don't care about, whether you're a black, white, Latino, or you know, you're a, a woman who works for you know, Huffington Post and you're crying every day, you don't care about what happens in the Middle East, Middle East that much because it hasn't affected you that much. We don't have that much terrorism. We don't have that much displacement of migrants yet. But guess who does care about it? Russia, because they're cl a lot closer than we are. And they're like, you know what? If the U.S. keeps screwing up the Middle East, we're gonna ha there's going to be just a migrant crisis all over. It's going to destroy Europe. So maybe they were like, hey, you know what? We don't want you to kill Bashar al-Assad of Syria, the president of Syria, like we did, like you did to Gaddafi, because you killed Gaddafi in in Libya, and now there's slavery. So what do you think is going to happen when you kill the president of Syria? And you look at Bashar al-Assad, and you hear him talk. He's not like a la, 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 la. he's not like a raging freaking uh, you know radicalist like they try, try to tell you he is. He's like a well-spoken uh, normal person who's like, yo, the U.S. is lying about a lot of things and. You know, I'm just trying to like not have terrorists take over. You talk to anybody or any journalist or any politician who's gone there besides John McCain, who's probably working with the moderate rebels, or he's definitely working with the moderate rebels. The question is, who are they really? How moderate are they? And what type of rebels are they? But they're saying that the strongest force in Syria are the terror groups. So if you kill the leader and you attack the Syrian army, you are going to let terrorists take over. And that's how slavery comes into play because these people don't care. They'll chop people's heads off. They'll throw kids off buildings. And yes, they will enslave Africans and they'll probably enslave white people and Latinos and Asians and whoever else is in their way. They'll enslave anybody. They'll enslave other Muslims, I'm sure, too. So it's nothing to do with hating the religion. And I know President Trump and a lot of conservatives don't talk about it very uh, respectfully or accurately a lot of the times, but this is the reality of the Middle East. Yes, there is extremism. Yes, there is slavery in Libya. Yes, President Trump potentially stopped there from being slavery in Libya. No, everybody's not racist, sexist, or xenophobic who likes President Trump. No, everybody's not sexist who like doesn't like Hillary Clinton. No, everybody's not racist if they don't like Barack Obama. There's 10 million reasons not to like these people, and you don't know about any of them. If you're one of those people who is so racist and sexist that you just follow somebody with your skin color or the same amount of chromosomes as you. If I see a, a Puerto Rican, Italian, Italian, Polish guy, and he's like, hey, vote for me. I'm like, no, bro. Like, who are you? What, what are you about? What are you doing? And I don't make my decision until the final day either. anyway. People always say, are you going to vote for Trump in 2020? I'm not going to make my decision until the day of because I'm going to take all of the leading weeks and year, months into consideration. But why would I just blindly follow a politician that's the same skin color and ethnicity as me? I wouldn't because that's racist and that's in itself <laughs> being like, oh yeah, my culture is so superior. I'm just going to vote for anybody that's just like me. But that's what Hillary, her whole campaign was based off of. Before she hijacked Bernie Sanders' campaign, her whole campaign was woman card. Come get your woman card. Print it out and put it on your stomach. You're a woman. I'm a woman. I'm a woman who destroys Haiti. I'm a woman who destroys Libya. But I'm a woman, so vote for me. And everyone's like, yeah, I got my woman card. And then Bernie Sanders came through, and he's like, it's all about us. It's we. We're the people. And it started getting huge. And Hillary's like, oh, yeah. It's about us it's it's we it's all about us it's together together we win oh i love trump's hate she started stealing bernie sanders whole platform before doing her little sexist uh woman card thing i took screenshots of the website it's so corny and sexist and luring in uh fake feminists but whatever and then with barack obama most people i'm not going to say all because anytime you group any sort of race or, g or gender together, I make fun of both sides. It's like I say, oh, this, that, feminist, whatever. I'm just having fun with it. I'm sorry, I have a sense of humor, humor as well, and I don't like to be so serious all the time. But a large portion of people just see Barack Obama as a black man. And first of all, I believe you know his mom was one, his, his 
mom was white or his dad was white. I don't know. He's half and half. Not that it matters, skin color, whatever. I don't really care. But he's more than just a black man or the first African-American president. Yes, that's victorious. Yes, that's amazing. Yes, it's incredible. Yes, I'm glad that our country could let people of other skin colors and hopefully, you know, another day, uh, people from whatever. You know, any differences you have that are different from other presidents, that's great. But a high majority of people who are celebrating that were closing their eyes to every single thing that he did. And it's not about your words or your skin color. It's about your actions. It's about what you do. It's about the content of your character. That's what activism used to be, was not being racist and liking people because of who they are. I don't care what race somebody is. I don't care what religion somebody is. I have friends of multiple religions that I like better than people of other religions. I have friends of you know, multiple races that I like better than people of my own ethnicity because I like the content of people's character. I like who they are. I like their morals. I like their standards. I like, you know, their sense of humor and their personality and, you know, what they do every day. It has nothing to do with, oh my God, he has the same skin color as me, so I must assume that everybody's right. I mean, that's the most idiotic thing to think, especially, especially when it comes to politicians because they basically make their whole lifestyle off of using a bunch of nice shiny words and then going in behind closed doors and writing 5,000 page legislations that we never even know what they mean, putting a little tagline on it and then using it to dish out to the people. So this is a warning, a friendly, honest warning. Stop assuming just because someone's the same gender as you that they have your best interests at heart. Stop assuming just because someone has the same skin color as you or the same religion as you that they have your interest at best heart your your interests at, at heart your best interest at heart excuse me stop assuming that if somebody's even in your political party or has the same political ideology as you stop assuming that they have your best interests at heart i'm open to the fact that the president of the united states now doesn't have my best interests at heart i'm open to that fact but i'm watching actions i'm considering it and also, to be honest, I'm looking at the competition. And the competition is so weak and pathetic, it's not easy to one-up them. So this is what that's about. This is the uncomfortable talk that a lot of people aren't going to have when it comes to the slave trade in Libya. Because anybody can make a, lib uh, a video telling you about, oh, there's slave trade in Libya. It, this is why it's happening. It's so sad. And, you know, much respect to those videos. I think it does deserve awareness. But we should get to the root of the problem, too. And a huge root of the problem among just the failed policies of, of Obama and Hillary are the fact that we can't, we can't and don't have conversations in America anymore. When everything is racist, nothing is racist. So now real racists get away rampant. The biggest, you know, activists are actually um, bringing racism to a new high. When you can't have a conversation, including women politicians, without assuming it's sexism or, you know, uh, misogyny, you're actually being sexist and you're actually letting true abusers get away free. When you can't have a conversation about border security and travel security in the Middle East without screaming xenophobia, even, especially if you're a black American, to be honest, I mean, the extremists of that religion don't will literally enslave you in certain countries so it's not it's not somebody to, to really align with i'm not talking about all people of that religion but i'm talking about the extremists who exist by the tens of thousands if not millions in the middle east they're enslaving people in 2017 so i'm not saying to agree or disagree with anybody but i'm saying to have a conversation about it because when you blindly just think that everybody's your ally outside of president trump and everybody who doesn't have you know, a certain skin color, it has your best interests at heart. It's just not the truth. And it's never going to be true, no matter how much Twitter lies about it, no matter how much Facebook lies about it, no matter how much all of the newspapers lies about it. It's never going to be true. These problems are going to get worse and worse and worse until they hit the United States of America. And when they do that, it's going to be a lot harder to ignore. The only reason we've even been allowed to ignore stuff like this is because we're not that close to the Middle East. We're positioned incredibly. It's a, it's a beautiful country, and we're very, very lucky to be where we are, uh, not only financially, economically, but uh, position-wise on, on the map. And that's really just what I want to talk about. You know, it's all love. It's all peace. It's all unity. It's all equality. It's all freedom. It's all justice. I have the same goals as every 
Black Lives Matter activists. I have the same goals as every Trump supporter. I feel that the Trump supporters and the Black Lives Matter, they actually have the same exact goals. They just have a different way of going about them. And in a lot of cases, they just don't explain it to each other uh, in the proper way. So I'm trying to bring people together. And I'm also trying to tell people the truth. The comfortable lie is what got us to slavery. It's what got us to 2 million videos uh, of child abuse. And no one cared about it. We've been talking about this stuff for years. And to sum it up, this is how the news hides stuff like this. They, they label stuff alt-right and conservative. Throw out the labels. I don't care if it's the most conservative person who posts something. If you can't analyze it and decide either, yes, that's true, I care about it, or no, it's not true and I don't care about it, you're going to continue to get played by identity politics. Even if it's the worst person in the world, there's two options when he says something. It's true or it's not true or it has some truth. So the fact that they're using labels to rope us all in, you're black, you're white. What does that even mean? You're black. Okay, well, well there's some people who are Native American. There's some people who are African American. There's some people who aren't even African at all. There's, you know, black people from different countries and continents. When you're, oh, you're a white person, what does that even mean? You're, you're a white person from Mexico. Your family came over on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, and you literally conquered the Indians. Are you that white? Are you British white? Uh, did your family come from, you know, Poland and Italy and work in factories? Like, the way that we group people in based on colors is so ignorant to, to, to start with. I don't even like talking about it unless I'm doing an analysis, because to me... The whole labels is, is misleading and it takes a large group of people who are incredibly diverse and have their own struggles and their own historical struggles and puts them in the same box. And you want to talk about history? Oh, you don't, you don't accept history. That's what people say. How come we pinpoint one part of history but we can't even talk about the last 10 years accurately? So let's talk about history. Let's talk about a thousand years ago, let's talk about 300 years ago, let's talk about 100 years ago, let's talk about 50 years ago, let's talk about you know things like the Armenian Genocide, which never got brought up in a conversation, and the Young Turks basically named themselves after them and are running rampant on YouTube today, and let's talk about five or ten years ago, let's talk about yesterday, let's talk about last week, let's talk about it all, because having conversations and not grouping ourselves into labels and saying, oh, that's, that's conservative, I can't listen to it. That's progressive or that's liberal, I can't listen to it. No, listen to it. Either it's true or it's not true. Regardless of the label, regardless of the affiliation, this is what we need to do to get down to the truth. And I'm going to continue to broadcast and to try to bring people together to have these uncomfortable and sometimes uh, you know, in politically correct conversations because this is the type of stuff that's gonna stop slavery. This is the type of stuff that's gonna stop racism. All of the main activists in the US now are the most racist ones. And they're the ones that say, oh, these lives matter, except for the fact when a, a conservative says it, or you know, people shed light to what's really happening all over the Middle East, then all of a sudden no lives matter because we don't, we're just pushing our talking point. Let's, have, let's talk about everybody. Let's have a full conversation while respecting people's activism and not let slavery exist in 2017. It's happening in Libya, according to many reports, and if these are true, which many sources are pointing to, it's an absolute disaster. Thank you so much for listening. I'm gonna post my email link and my donation link below. Your support means a lot and it, it helps me able to broadcast stuff like this. So I'm gonna leave it at that.